Drug addiction is a disease, and it's a mental disease. The leading explanations are hijacking and prior self-medication. Most people think of it as hijacking. The innate reward and pain suppression systems are involved in generating this kind of vulnerability. So one way of looking at drug addiction is as hijacking the reward system that we have built into us to shape our own behavior. Another possibility is that it is the consequence of a history of selected self-medication with plant compounds. There is genetic variation in susceptibility to addiction, which means that it could be responding to selection in contemporary populations. Let's take a look at the innate reward systems to see how evolution may have set us up to be vulnerable to hijacking. There are two kinds of reward systems and there are two types of pleasure sensations. One rewards anticipation and the other one rewards satisfaction. Anticipation is rewarded by the dopaminergic pathways that control appetitive behavior. Satisfaction is rewarded by the opioid pathways that control consumptive behaviors and suppress pain. Dopaminergic pathways are targeted by psychostimulants like cocaine and methamphetamine, speed. They counteract frustration, depression, and despair. Opioid pathways are targeted by opium and heroin. They counteract hunger, thirst, and pain. Both systems are based on feed-forward and negative feedback circuits of homeostasis. The topaminergic reward system is centered on the nucleus accumbens and it receives inputs from the medial prefrontal cortex, from the anterior cingulate cortex, from the orbital frontal cortex, and from the hippocampus. It is centered on a transcription factor, delta FOS B, that's expressed in the ventral tegmental area of the nucleus accumbens, in the, in the nucleus accumbens, and in part of the prefrontal cortex. Addictive drugs rewire this reward circuitry and enhance expression of delta FOS B, and that produces a feeling of pleasure. The opioid reward system elicits the pleasure of satisfaction, whether that's caused by food consumption or by pain relief. The pituitary gland can produce neuropeptides called endorphins that act like opioids, inhibiting pain signals and producing a feeling of euphoria. Endorphins can be released as part of the fight or flight response in anticipation of possible pain. How is the reward system hijacked? Well, opiates like morphine and heroin activate the receptors that mediate natural endorphin signaling. Cocaine inhibits dopamine reuptake transports, stimulating dopaminergic rewards. And nicotine binds to acetylcholine receptors that trigger the release of dopamine in the ventral tegumentum and adrenaline in the adrenal medulla. Alcohol enhances the binding of glutamate, triggering an expression of delta FOS B and the activity of nicotinergic, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. That triggers the release of dopamine. So you can see that many of these drugs are triggering receptors that result in the release of dopamine. Amphetamines have many effects, including enhancing the expression of delta FOS B, which is a central player. They all set in motion events that lead to the sensation of pleasure, the cessation of pain, or both. Another hypothesis for why drug addiction exists is that we have an evolutionary history of self-medicating with plant compounds. Both primates and insects that are infected with pathogens consume plants containing compounds that have curative effects. The self-medication hypothesis posits that humans have long been exposed by plant compounds with curative properties, have sought them out when infected, and have evolved a reward system that motivates them to seek out such plant compounds when, if, when infected. There is some preliminary evidence that suggests that tobacco smoke can reduce worm burden, but much more work is needed. 
Humans vary genetically in their susceptibility to addiction. There are genotypes that are much more susceptible than others. Addictive substances are sensed by the receptors and processed by the enzymes that also deal with drugs. Humans therefore vary genetically in their susceptibility to drug addiction just as they do in their ability to process drugs. The heritability of susceptibility to addictive agents is high. Here is an example. This is the heritability of susceptibility, for example, to hallucinogens, it's about 0.4, to sedatives, it's about 0.55, and to cocaine, it's about 0.7. So that means that there is a lot of genetic variation out there in the population for susceptibility to these sorts of drugs. This doesn't mean that people are more susceptible to cocaine. It means that there's more variation for susceptibility to cocaine addiction. So to summarize, drug addiction results from ingesting substances that trigger systems that evolve to shape adaptive behaviors through the reward of pleasure and the suppression of pain. Such exposure may be an evolutionary novelty or an experience with an evolutionary history. Addiction illustrates the principle that every adaptive system contains a vulnerability that can permit the expression of a disease. Such vulnerabilities often vary genetically among individuals.